Hi guys, how you doing? Thanks as always for the support on all my videos and all the comments you leave. Again, I'm going to have a couple of questions for you, so if you want to give me your answers in the comments section again, I'll have the questions at the end, so hang around for those. Today, I want to talk to you about picking. Um, in my opinion, on all the picking videos, people tend to talk about one particular aspect, which is the angle of the pick and the way that it hits the strings. Uh, now, in my humble opinion, that's only part of the story, and people tend to neglect another aspect, uh, which in my opinion is a lot more important. Um, I've been playing guitar for 18 years now, and in my personal experience, the thing which affects the efficiency of your picking more than anything else is the angle at which your hand approaches the guitar. The way you hold your hand down here by the strings can seriously affect the type of muscles that you're using or the type of force that you're generating on the pick to make it move and how much you know effort you're putting into it basically um, everyone talks about you know the 45 degree angle on the pick but what they're kind of forgetting to talk about is if your hand isn't really in a position which is efficient for you as a player then that kind of 45 degree angle with the pick isn't going to make any difference you know it's uh, it's just not enough if you look at all the great pickers they all seem to have more differences than they have similarities in the way that they hold their pick. I can't tell you what is going to be right for you. All I can tell you is what worked for me and why, and hopefully that will help you diagnose your own picking problems if you have any. Everybody of course talks about being relaxed, having a relaxed picking hand and stuff like that. Um, let's talk about that actually. Um, if you hold your hand out and you move it left and right as if you're waving at the floor as fast as you can that's there's a limit to what you can do there and you can see a whole kind of like forearm rotating and moving at the same time if you just let it hang and shake that feels a lot more natural and that hand hanging down away from the wrist like that is a much more natural feeling kind of position rather than having your hand either parallel or having the hand up like that both feel like there's muscular tension on the, uh, I think it's called the brachioradialis muscle, the muscle which runs from your wrist to your elbow at the top. You can feel that getting involved a lot more. And you can understand why people get, you know, tennis elbow and RSI and stuff like that. Um, which I've got, but not from guitar playing, which really sucks. Um, <laughs> which I take quite personally. I didn't even get it from guitar playing. That's, that's a real insult. So I have to be careful with my guitar playing, otherwise it will flare up. Um, which is another reason why I had to look harder at the hand positions in which I was using. So um, let's get a little bit closer to the guitar now and um, have a look at the uh, wrist in close up. Okay, in order to get this kind of relaxed wrist motion, um, if you think about rhythm playing, I'll, I'll guarantee you, no matter what kind of picking position that everybody uses, I bet you that most people when they play rhythm guitar have that kind of thing happening where the wrist is kind of pointed outwards like that because it's more natural for your hand to move when you're strumming and all I did was just apply that to uh, picking um, normally I used to have my picking hand kind of down here kind of parallel to the strings and uh, I even experimented with like hanging it out and bringing it in like that even which does afford you quite a lot of speed um, but the downside of that is it's really crap for crossing strings because your pick is kind of facing out like that. Uh, so you're really struggling there to bring it in every time you cross a string. So that's not ideal. That's only good for like single note riff, like Morbid an Angel kind of stuff. So um, if you want to be efficient at picking all across the strings and uh, doing some serious licks and stuff like that, then you've got to look at a way where you can get some speed happening, but you can also control that and if you can mute the strings as well at the same time, that is going to be even better. If we look at this hand position and we take it to its extreme, we could end up with something like that. And that's kind of like a somewhere between what Marty Freeman and Eddie Van Halen are doing, you know, where they've got a wrist thing happening now. I think even Zach Wilde kind of does that sometimes as well. Um, the trouble with being out there is you're too far away from your guitar, you don't have a lot of control over the muting. And we want control over our muting, really. Um, so essentially what you're going to have to do is you're going to have to experiment with that floppy wrist syndrome thing going on there. But in such a way as so you can still use that part of your hand, this part, all along here and let it hang in like that. So you're covering everything. I can cover all the strings, my pick is facing in a good 
uh, direction and um, I can mute okay and I've got that ideal position to be able to do the kind of like the shake at first when you start doing it you might feel like you've got no control you know and your pick is jumping around over the place but that's like anything you start you're gonna feel out of control until you sort of start taming the beast um, but if you can experiment with that and at least get that thing happening and feel what uh, and experience what it feels like to so have the hand moving at a fast speed in that position, then you're kind of like you're on the right track. All you need to do is kind of like start marrying that up now with your left hand. As I said earlier in the video, I can't tell you what's going to work for you. I can only tell you what worked for me and why. Why do I think this works for me? Um, it's because I think that having your wrist in like that is a lot more natural to be able to pivot from that point than it is from that point or that point. And there's too much kind of added tension and there's not a lot of potential for your wrist to actually move fast when you're going um, in a parallel position. At least I don't think there is. Not for me anyway. There's not much potential there to gain speed unless I start using extra movements with my forearm, which I don't want to do. Um, hence, which I like this, because it's very, it feels very natural for the wrist to move at a rapid pace. That's why I prefer that than having my hand at a parallel angle. Also, in order to get it this way, I kind of bring my hand a little bit up, so it's a bit higher than it was before. So it's up here. Rather than being kind of down there. And the last thing I will say about picking is rather than trying to think about moving your hand left and right or up and down as fast as you can, think about the tip of the pick, where it is on the string. Okay. And just imagine that what you're actually trying to do, in order to speed the pick up, you actually have to move it back the opposite direction as quick as you can. It's actually about reducing the amount that the pick travels in one direction. So you pick down, and you reduce the amount that the pick travels, and bring it back up again. So it's actually about keeping the pick as close to the string as possible, and bringing it back in the opposite direction as fast as you can. That by itself will automatically make you speed up. So if you think of it in that way, instead of having to think, oh, I need to move my hand faster, actually think about the pick, where it is, where it touches the string, keep it as close to the string as you can, and move it backwards in the other direction. And you'll start speeding up. And you will feel tension in your arm. It's because the muscle is working harder, it's working at a faster rate, so don't be surprised if you feel burning there you're going to, the arm is going to be involved whether you like it or not because your wrist doesn't operate on its own independently from your body, it's connected you can't expect to just plod along at the same speed and then magically you can just get faster every day, you know, you do need to start pushing yourself and make yourself perform at a faster rate in order for your brain to say, oh hey, we need to work at a faster rate, so let's start sending those uh, neurological signals down to, to the fingers and the hands and all that sort of stuff to work faster So. Um, a bit of rubbish pseudoscience for you there, but essentially that's what you're doing. That's why you need to sort of start telling yourself to perform faster. So start telling the pick to move faster in the opposite direction where it hits the string, then you'll begin to start playing faster. Hopefully that makes sense. Thanks for watching. I've got a couple of questions for my regulars and for anybody else who wants to get involved. I always like hearing from my viewers, all right? So we talked about movies last time and games. I want to ask you guys, do you read at all? I'm a huge reader, I love books. I know it probably doesn't sound very cool, it's a bit geeky, but it's one of the things I've loved for years. It keeps me sane. Uh, so yeah, what are your favourite books? I'm really digging some David Gemmell historical fiction right now. I also read lots of thrillers, crime, stuff like that, like Lee Child. Grew up on stuff like Alistair MacLean and Jack Higgins and stuff, so I'm, loads of different stuff. But yeah, really digging kind of like the historical fiction of the Greek kind of stuff right now. Um, also, tell you guys where you come from. I know quite a few of you, but just be interesting to know where you live. So just holler on the comments and say, yeah, I'm from wherever. So it's just interesting to know. If you have any other ideas of things you'd like me to talk about in a future video, uh, just leave me a comment. You know, give me a few ideas and things like that. Uh, so yeah, I hope to hear from you guys. I hope you enjoyed this video. Hopefully it makes some sense. I know I waffle a lot. I've tried to keep it down, but it never works. I always end up talking for like 10 years. So I hope that you can 
uh, forgive me that and uh, get some good nuggets of information. I'll see you guys next time.